Good morning. It is morning. Is it still morning at 12 o'clock? I never know. I always think of it as morning. Hello everybody and welcome to our uh, regular um, Saturday Live. It's nice to be here again. These weeks are flying by. Um, let me just refresh my page so I can see you all. How are you all this week? Have you all had a good week? What have you been up to? Do say hello and let me know that you're there. Oh, let me see if I can see where you are and then I'll be able to say hello back. Oh, Sally Scott's here. Morning, Sally. Jilly. Hi, Jilly. Well, here we go. I'm just going to scroll down. Hi, Coral. Nice to see you all. What have you been up to this week? We've been, what have we been up to? We've been really busy with um, couture. You'll see my couture jacket is coming along. Very time consuming. And Sally will know, won't you, what her, um, that uh, couture takes a long time. Many hours of work. And of course, we're filming it as we go as well. So, um, Hi Marilyn. How come you're seeing before me? Oh, I've gone too far down. That's it. Because I'm special. Hi Marilyn. Mm. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> yeah, Amy's special. Um, uh, yeah, we've been doing couture. Uh, so that's yeah, lots of work on that. I haven't had much time to do much other sewing this week, apart from couture. Apart from obviously Amy's uh, international Etsy shop has now gone a little bit crazy. So we've been doing lots of that as well. Hi Susan. How are Hi, you? Hi Susan. Hi Sue. Hi Sue. How are you? How's the crochet going? Hi Suzanne. Hi Sally. Hi, Hi Sally. Oh, what's Suzanne been up to? I'll be homeschooling. Oh you see that's the, that's the thing when you're allowed out of lockdown. Got to be doing the homeschooling. <laughs> Hope it's all going really well. Is it nice over there in Guernsey today? It's quite sunny here today again. It's lovely. Um, yeah so the couture is going really well. I've made a, done, done my salvage. I'm now finishing off the the, the hand stitched hand uh, sewn buttonholes. Took me a whole day, so that was a, a one day of nothing but hand sewn buttonholes, uh, and then uh, starting to finish off the inside of the buttonholes and put on the trim. So it's getting there. I'm hoping, fingers crossed. Morning, Janet, and um, that I will have a finished jacket to show you next week. That's the plan. So be wearing it. I'm hopefully yes. I might be wearing this next week. Hi Pat, are you still it's making Patricia. scrubs? Oh Patricia, oh hi Patricia, how are you? Still making scrubs? Nice to see you. Hi Linda. Oh yeah, Marilyn said, thank you Marilyn. Yeah, we had a nice lovely one-to-one -one this week uh, with the, talking about the couture jacket and making twirls and lots of tips. I hope it was helpful. Um, Sally, oh the new babies, congratulations Sally. Oh yes I saw that, you're making, you're making uh, little animals for new babies, that's very exciting. I just need to get rid of that one because I can't see, what's that, Suzanne, yeah. Thank you Suzanne, yes. it is very mental, my Etsy shop broke into America this week. Yes, so gone worldwide. I was a bit inundated <laughs> with orders. Hi Claire, nice to see you, what are you doing? Oh I was trying the visible zip, oh that's good. Uh, that's good. Try that technique. I find it as my favourite. Always pin and tack an invisible zip. That's my tip on that one. Um, Sally, is that your blazer you're doing the line, lining on? I'm looking forward to seeing that. It's looking good so far. I've been doing so much hand sewing this week. My shoulder's hurting from all the hand sewing. <laughs> Sue's saying, oh, I love your little smiley emoji with the mask on, Sue. Did you see that? I haven't seen that one. <laughs> What else have we done? So I did one to, a couple of one-to-ones, one of them with uh, Marilyn, which was lovely. We had a lovely Zoom tea with the Dressmakers Portfolio. Hi, Jane. Um, dressmakers Portfolio ladies this week. So the Dressmakers Portfolio, um, let me see what's Jilly saying. Uh, oh, she's got the embroidery machine going. That's brilliant. My machine's still up in Midhurst. I must go and get that. No, there's no space for there's it. There's no room. There's no room for an <laughs> embroidery machine here. No more. <laughs> Oh, Sally, I'm looking forward to seeing your stuff from Colby. We need I... pictures, Sally. Yes. Oh, morning, man. <laughs> <laughs> Normally you just watch without saying hello, so we can say hello to you today. <laughs> um, oh, 
Uh, yeah, so we've been, what else we've we done? The lovely Zoom tea, the dressmaker's portfolio ladies, who, um, the dressmaker's portfolio do six months with me, uh, doing lots of tutorials and workshops, and sometimes they're there every day. Uh, so we really get, really get close, and we were supposed to have our um, final lunch of the end of term, just before lockdown. Uh, so we haven't had that, but it was really nice to see everybody last week. We had a cup of tea and a chat. Um, oh, winter wardrobe, so I don't know. I don't know, Mine's risky. Still out. Oh, afternoon, Wendy. <laughs> we had the discussion about morning or afternoon. It is afternoon. <laughs> now he's saying hello again. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, it was really lovely to see everybody this week. We had a good old chat and a catch up with everybody because um, a, a couple aren't on, aren't on Facebook. So, you know, to catch up with people on Zoom is lovely. I have to say, I'm really, really enjoying Zoom. Um, what else have you been up to? I've seen some lovely things on Mitter Sewer's page. I saw Wendy's made a lovely top for her daughter, uh, which is a Vogue pattern. It's got a nice shape for maternity, which is great. And Sue has been playing with her embellisher. I've got an embellisher up at Midhurst, but I haven't played with it much yet. But after seeing Sue's coat, that was really clever, Sue, with the with doing the lines around the edge. That was great. And Julie Morris made a lovely coat with nice pattern matching across the front. And Suzanne, Suzanne made a lovely children's dress with a nice circle skirt. So that was interesting to look at that and talk about how to finish circle skirts on the overlocker. So that was, uh, they're lovely. So keep letting me know, keep posting pictures and tell me what you've been making. It's really nice to see. Oh, Sue's put some of her winter clothes away. Well, are we still wearing socks and tights? That's what I want to know. Occasionally. Mind I haven't actually worn tights <laughs> since finishing work. <laughs> I don't think I've worn tights for weeks. I live in flip-flops now. Yeah, flip-flops and trainers and slippers, basically. <laughs> That's what we've been living in. So, yeah, the coat was lovely. Well, there were two coats this week. There were Sue's with the embellisher, which was lovely. It really brought that coat to life. Uh, and uh, Julie's lovely, um, uh, Julie's lovely uh, checked coat, which was beautiful. Sue's still wearing socks. Yeah. Loving the emoji work, Sue. Yeah, good emoji work. <laughs> Sally's in her Birkenstocks, yeah. It's all about the comfort. We're going to have real trouble going back to proper shoes. I think we mentioned that last week, didn't we? Going back to shoes and tights and dressing smart for work. <laughs> socks in the evening, yeah. Socks and slippers. Oh, cotton socks. Yes, hi, Emma. <laughs> Bless your cotton socks. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, so that's a yeah, good quite a discussion about socks. One thing we don't make unless you knit. The socks. Is anyone still making scrubs? We finished our last scrubs uh, order this week, so we're having a break from scrubs. Yeah, Jilly says yes to Birkenstocks. No tights or socks. Is it nice and sunny over there in Guernsey, Suzanne? I haven't actually put my. Sorry, that was a very noisy motorbike. Oh yeah. So we have to have the doors open. It gets so hot in here. So we've got the patio doors open. We have to have the curtains closed because of the uh, the light that comes in at the wrong angle at this time of day. So then we can hear all the traffic. You can hear all the traffic. And seagulls. Yes, Pat, Patricia, we have been watching the sewing bee. What did you all think about the sewing bee this week? I can't, I'm still liking um, Therese, Therese and, and Peter, although Peter was risky with his final dress, wasn't he? So, um, oh, was Angela still making scrubs? I haven't heard from Angela for a couple of weeks. I hope she's okay, Sally. Um, yeah, Peter was risky with his final dress this week, wasn't he? he was, I liked it, but, but then I'm not really a tennis dress person, so... Is anyone going to make a tennis? Hi, Catherine. Anyone keen to make a tennis dress? There were some good techniques, I have to say. I'm not sure it's a, a garment that I would particularly wear. Um, but, um, yeah, I think there were some good techniques shown in the, on the tennis dresses. Yeah, you're right, Sally. I think Peter's more of a designer. He's got more of a... He likes things with a bit more edge to them, doesn't he? So, yeah, I like, I like what he does. What do we think about the cagoule? Oh, hi, Clark. How nice to see you. That's lovely. Thank you for coming and saying hello. Hi, Jen. Oh, Jen, did you see last week? I meant to say to you, I did a lapped zip last week. I don't know if you got to, got to catch it. I know you'd asked for it before. Um, oh, Jen, it's nearly finished the scrubs. Emma's made a racerback top and a skirt. That's great. There's lots of techniques. Hi, Julia. Um, yeah, I like Peter's dress, Susan, as well. It's nice, wasn't it? 
Yeah, it would be really comfy for working at home. It would be, wouldn't it? I liked it, and I liked that nice high collar. I know they said it wasn't very practical for tennis, which it probably isn't really, but it was a nice dress. Um, what else? What did you think about the cagoule, the, the uh, challenge? Hi, Margaret. Oh, the retro toweling shorts. Yeah, I thought that was really cool, wasn't it? <laughs> Chilly wind in Guernsey. Oh, peonies. Suzanne, I love peonies. Suzanne's Lovely. got peonies in her I think Julia's making twirls, not toilets. <laughs> <laughs> I let that, do you know, <laughs> autocorrect always turns twirls into toilets. <laughs> <laughs> Patricia wants me to do a course on tennis dress. <laughs> there are some really nice techniques, and if you're into tennis, I think they're great. I prefer a dress to a little short dress with shorts underneath. It's nicer than just wearing shorts. <laughs> but what about the rugby shirt with three millimeter seam allowances on the top? That's quite tricky. We were like, it's like, we've got three millimeter seams. If you did like the rugby top, I know we talked about that because a lot of people have got the book. Um, and it hasn't got any of the patterns that are in the workshop, but we did see a good rugby top pattern. It's a Vogue, I think it's 9378. It's a really nice man's rugby shirt, because that's quite, quite nice techniques on that. Oh, we, I haven't got any peonies. The camellias are finished now. We haven't got any peonies in the garden. Jen thought the cagoule was hard. It yeah. was, wasn't it? Really yeah, I hard. thought that was a really, really tricky, what to do with the cagoule. And then to make it into a, a child's outfit was very, odd but you know you've got to test all your techniques haven't you working with tricky fabrics i think that was the that was the thing with that one but i did like i quite like the techniques used in the rugby shirt that was a very tricky placket <laughs> yeah it would be i think <laughs> jen was saying that putting the uh, putting your child into one of those um ones those onesie things is like dressing an octopus <laughs> oh the merchant and mills they do have a Oh, yes, they Rugby do, dress. don't they? It's really nice. Yes. Yeah, and that would have the same sort of neckline, wouldn't it? Mm, yeah. I'd forgotten about that. Thanks, yeah, Emma. Yeah, thanks, Emma. Yeah. I would wear that, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Pleasy tennis would look better with the pleats. Yeah, there was one pleasy one, wasn't there, where she'd done pleats and stitched them down. It was a bit tight, so it wasn't very flattering, and then it was gathered into the waistband. So it's a nice idea with the pleated skirt, but uh, it wasn't quite finished off very well. So... Um, there were some nice ideas. I was talking to somebody, I think it was Jilly mentioned about doing the bagging out with that racer back. That's quite, that's quite tricky to do and working with those stretchy fabrics as well. I looked on the, um, oh, I think it's the So Direct blog. I've done a blog. Uh, they do one every week and um, Sally says the rugby dress is very you, Ames. Oh, thank you. And yes, I think so. I'm going to add it to my herbal growing list. Uh all suit for her daughter yes i think they do keep the things they make because i follow um uh the um what's the name the girl with the bright red hair jade uh, so she's on instagram still and she doesn't do any sewing now but every week she's posting pictures of the things that she made uh, while she was on the sewing bee so i think they do eventually get to keep them emma prefers to shove balls up her pants <laughs> 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 Thanks, Emma. <laughs> Glad to hear. From it. a tennis player. Yeah, she's professional. <laughs> That's not us just throwing a ball around. <laughs> just because you can play tennis this week now, we're allowed to go out and play tennis and golf. Well, you are. I'm not. I'm, not. I'm just. I'm just staying at home. I'm doing any more. You're a tennis player, Mum. No. <laughs> no, definitely not. Just because we're allowed to do more exercise doesn't mean we have to. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, uh, Jen about the waistband uh, one needs to use it <laughs> so that would be good Sue I think one of those discreet flaps you know I did some trousers um, for a regency uh, do uh, last year actually and the trousers had to have a flap in the front so I think maybe what Sue's saying about adding a flap to a onesie for when you want to go to the loo so you'd have to get completely undressed well there you go I have a pocket for my balls. <laughs> this, this line has gone, it's gone rogue. <laughs> it's, it's gone, I'm not going to... When I start calling them out, they're all going to sound a bit weird about flaps for toilets and... If you're logged in, if you're just logging in, we're talking about tennis breath dresses. Yeah. <laughs> tennis dresses and onesies. <sighs> <laughs> balls and 
claps. Yeah. It's really not going well. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> yes, Jane, going back to Peter's dress with the pockets. Yes, I thought it looked really nice. <laughs> Yeah, Lux, sportswear, as in sportswear that you don't wear to do sport, would be, that was a really nice dress, I think. I thought it was lovely. And if you go on to, as I was saying, uh, before I was rude interrupted by the general chatter on the, <laughs> uh, if you go on to So Direct, they've got a blog, uh, and uh, Wendy Gardner actually writes lots of bits for the blog, but also they, lots of tips and things, but also they have somebody who's looking at all the things that are made on the site, well, I'm crying now. <laughs> um, with the... <laughs> They have lots of tips on which patterns they might have used or you could use for the <laughs> Suzanne, various Suzanne, have things. we all been on the, the gin? <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, they have lots of uh, tips on the patterns that could be used, some of that could have been used in the um, uh, in the challenge on the sewing bee. So there was a nice one. That's where I got the tip about the rugby shirt, uh, Vogue 9378, and there's some quite nice um, uh, tennis, uh, tennis dress as well. Thank you, May. <laughs> let's bring it back let's bring it back to me <laughs> thank you may this uh just uh, about what i'm wearing today actually this is the um paper cut patterns um <laughs> uh, coachy top which was i love this top uh, it's really pretty it's got little ties on it so you can wear it as a top or you could wear it just as like a kimono jacket it was one of the patterns poor the poor lady at paper cut patterns last year was involved in a whole the whole controversy of cultural misappropriation whatever it was about using the word kimono on her patterns so it's now called the Kochi Top, but it's, it's really lovely. There was, we had lots of chat about that in the sewing room last year. Kochi Jacket. Kochi Jacket, yes, the Kochi Jacket. Paper cut patterns. And the fabric is a lovely loose weave linen from Mr. Rosenberg at Stitch Fabrics. So, yeah, which Amy bought me this fabric actually at one of the shows. It's very pretty. So I love it. I like this pattern. I did a workshop on it last year. It's a very nice pattern. It's got various different options on it as well. So it's paper cut patterns, the Kochi Jacket. So, <laughs> what else? I'm, not, I'm, I'm frightened to ask what you've been up to now. <laughs> <laughs> what other news have I got for you? So, other news this week, um, uh, uh, Liberty, uh, Liberty have got a fabric sale. So, just in case you're working through your stash and you might need some, some new fabric, Liberty have got a, a really good sale on their cottons and their silks. So, things that would have been uh, sort of £25 are now down to £17 a metre. So, that's quite nice. So, have a look at Liberty for their sale. And Linton have got a sale. Well, um, as if we haven't got enough Linton. They have a flash sale. Every, they bring out new fabrics every Tuesday and every Friday. Uh, so you can have a look at them. And on, the, on a uh, Wednesday, they're having a flash sale as well. So look out for that. And if you are subscribed to their newsletter, you get an extra 5% off. They give you a code in their newsletter every week. So did I buy any Liberty? No, I am uh, building my basket, Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a joint, a joint basket on Liberty. On Liberty, yeah. Uh, Their silks have been reduced as well. Oh, Emma's been so out pretty. <laughs> Emma, now just stop it, Emma. You're so naughty. <laughs> <laughs> Clark's a... Um, <laughs> Clark's a Liberty addict as well. Uh, and see, I know Sally's still buying because she's bought from Colville this week and you get lots of fabric from Colville when you order it, don't you? Spare room. Nothing, ha nothing wrong with having a stash. Uh, no, the, 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 um, this is a different kimono jacket. The one I was wearing uh, the other week, which one was I wearing? I wore, did I wear the black and white one on the line? Yes. That was a simplicity pattern. The black and white one I had on a couple of weeks ago, that was a simplicity pattern. Um, which has got a curved, curved back on it. That's a slightly simpler one, but they're both equally good. Yeah, have a look at Linton, Julia. They've got some. They're they're really on it with their new fabrics. And if you follow them on Facebook or Instagram, they're putting beautiful new fabrics up every twice a week to tempt us. To tempt us, yeah. Oh, well, lots of them out of stock, Emma. Oh no, I they're probably all in my basket. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they probably are. <laughs> Oh, the other thing I went and had a look at today was feeling in need of more couture, just in case I haven't got enough, was I had a look on the um, at the Dior exhibition on YouTube. The V&A have put a, a virtual guide of the Dior exhibition on YouTube. Do go and have a look. It's really good. <laughs> it's lovely. If you Even if you went, I went to see it twice, twice in London actually, and once in Paris. So I saw it quite a lot. But to go and see the virtual one, it's really good. It's on YouTube. Um... <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, the Liberty fabric is lovely for Yes, children. Suzanne, yeah. make for yourself. Yeah, make some for yourself. Get some Liberty silk. 
<laughs> yeah. Thanks, Clark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had to do midnight shopping. The basket, yeah, we're up in the morning. It's banned don't, after don't wine, put, though. Don't remember putting that in my basket last yeah. night. Yeah, after wine, it's banned. Oh, yeah, Emma, uh, Emma's saying about the Cora app aims. We haven't done that app. <gasps> See, this is yeah, what happens when you're... When you're <laughs> Your Every Etsy week. shop goes international. <laughs> week eight, still not done. It. Yeah, I know. We thought that week eight, so we finally got a tablecloth that covers the whole table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have. A, I had a quick look at the uh, Liberty page before we came on live to make sure that the sale hadn't ended, but it's still there. Um, so there's still quite a lot of bargains there. And have a look at the Linton. Um, Oh, yeah, Liberty do a nice lightweight corduroy as well, don't they, Patricia? Yeah, they do. What are you going to make with it, Patricia? Yeah, what are you going to make? There's a shop, there's a stand at Ali Pali that had a stand of lots of Liberties all in packed pieces, didn't they? And it was really nice to just go up and pick a few packets. It's a bit too easy. Oh, okay. Clark bought lots of PDF patterns off the late wine last night. Classic. <laughs> That's a real classic. Now you've got to get more printed, so you're going to be... Putting in lots of an order in with a net printer or pattern Z to get more printed. Oh, sewing silk. Just a few tips, Suzanne, about sewing with silk. I can give you a few tips on that. I did buy a new pattern this week, it hasn't come yet, because I was looking, I was just sorting out my fabric and I just happened to find a really nice piece of silk. And I thought um, that I might have bought in New York sometime. But anyway, um, uh, so I, and I saw a pattern for a dress. Now, what company was it? can't remember anyway it was a victory victory patterns that's right victory patterns uh, and it um, had a sort of kimono style sleeves and some nice shaped seams here so I've ordered that pattern uh, oh Jane I'm sorry it's <laughs> Clark's asking what's the other one from net printer or patency patterns patency the other one Jen the Linton skirt um, I haven't started that yet because I'm still doing my jacket uh, it's in my on my big pile of lists to be done, uh, but it will be once I finish the uh, jacket because we're filming that for a class and I've put the pressure of um, getting a new video out every week for the people who've booked onto that. So, <laughs> so yeah, I've got to finish this this week. Um, but I'm not far. I mean, the buttonholes did take the longest. So once I get and the sleeves are all done, I've just got to put them together. They're all they're all quilted. So I just need to finish those. Um, uh, Catherine would like a couture skirt as well. Margaret asked, what is silk lame? What weight is it? Oh, silk lame. Well, lame normally means very fine. Um, I would say more like, like a habitat. Yeah, I would think it's more like that sort of habitat weight. But I would need to get a sample of that. You know what it's like? Different shops call different things. <laughs> mm. I will do it, Jen. I did do the lap zip last week, you see, so I do get round to things eventually. Um... Yeah, I've got, I've got my, because I did buy, you won't be surprised, I did buy several skirt lengths of Linton, so I have got to do a nice pattern. Um, what are you doing, Patricia? Make a pencil skirt with her with her cord. That'd be lovely, the Liberty cord, that'd be lovely. But oh, that's it, the Trina dress, Emma. Yeah, it looks really nice, doesn't it? And I just, I really like the shape of it, so. Um... Oh yeah, James and Gemma said about the silk llama. Yeah, I think it's worth I'm worth getting a sample, I think, for that. It's always interesting to see what people uh, call their fabrics. There's a basic guideline. I do a I do a workshop called Know Your Fabrics where we go through all the fabrics and look at different names for different fabrics and some the same fabric is called different things. So uh yeah, Liberty Lame. Metallic thread. I thought mm. metallic. Yeah, yeah, because metallic lame is normally, yeah, it, that's what I was thinking. I was, thinking. I was thinking of the weight of a metallic lame, but if it's a silk lame, so metallic lame is often a bit like organza. That sort of, you know, so it's a little bit stiffer, isn't it? Um. <laughs> Clark said she bought twenty patterns, so sticking them together could be quite a lot. Yeah, this is a safe space, Clark. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> you can admit to buying twenty patterns. We all understand. Just get them all in the net printer or Patternsy basket and they'll all come to you, all beautifully packaged. <laughs> now, so Patternsy, we mentioned last week actually, Clark, Patternsy do theirs on a, like a tissue paper, which is quite nice. And net printer do them on a slightly thicker paper. But both are equally good. They're very quick. Oh, Emma, Colville Fabrics. Um, Colville are a Facebook um, fabric shop. And they do, they, if you follow them on Facebook 
and they put up their new fabrics and then you message them to say which ones you'd like and they um uh and you send them your paypal address and they then send you fabrics and they send your paypal invoice and send your fabrics and they always do them in cut lengths so three meter pieces and often in bundles as well so um i haven't i still haven't done it sally sorry uh, i was going to do it this week and um got a bit distracted <clears throat> so uh was that the Know Your Fabrics, Julia, that we did was the helpful fact. It was quite a good one, wasn't it? Yeah, Sue's saying drinking wine is essential when you're cutting and sticking. We did cut and stick the scrubs pattern, didn't we, Sue? So, um, yeah, I didn't mind doing that. And I don't mind if I'm, I'm doing like lingerie patterns and things when it's only a few pages. I don't mind cutting and sticking. It's woven. Oh, it looks really pretty. It's woven, Linton do both. Is that the Lame? Yeah, I think we'll have to get some samples of that. Hi, Karen, how are you? What's said on Claire's site stays on Claire's site. It does, site. it does. It just stays here between us <laughs> in our safe place. <laughs> we can all admit to our stashes and yeah, all that sort of thing. Oh, Julie wants to have a close-up of my jacket fabric. Well, I can zoom in now. Yeah, should I stand up? Uh, yeah. Can you see that? It's really pretty. It's got it's got really pretty colours on it. I think I don't know. Got they had it in several different colourways, didn't they? Yeah, it's a very fine linen, fine oh, printed linen. Turn, 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 turn around. Oh, hold on. Turn around. See the back of my hair now. There we go. Very pretty. So this uh, this pattern, I think it had a centre back seam, which I didn't want to I didn't want to spoil the seam. I didn't have enough to pattern match, so I just took out the centre back seam on this one. Thank you, Jilly. Oh, I think I just they just whizzed past really quickly, uh, but I think Margaret. I saw Margaret says you've got the kilo dress. Mm -hmm. Oh, my jeans are the ginger jeans. Thank you, Margaret. <laughs> Patricia's off shopping. See you next week, Patricia. It was really nice. Thank you for joining us this week. It's lovely to see you. Hope to see you in Midhurst again one day soon. Um, have you got this pattern, Sue? Did you say? Oh, you've got this fabric. Yes, you have got this fabric. I think you and Amy bought it at the same time, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, we were together. Shows. Yeah. And yeah, these are the ginger jeans, Margaret. So, um, did, Margaret, did I see you saying you've got the kilo dress? Because that's a great dress, actually. Um, that's by... Um, named. Named. Is it Named. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, named, and it's just a jersey dress, and you have ties on it, and it's. I made it. We made it for um, my other daughter. Is it named? I can't remember. It's in the cupboard. <laughs> or by hand. Thank you, Suzanne. No, it's not by hand. Yeah, it's named. It must be named. Uh, yeah, the kilo dress. Mark, that's a really good dress if you've got that one. I think Sally Counts has made it as well, uh, and it's it's really lovely. Uh, really, really flattering. It's really flattering. Best in a stretch fabric, but you can make it in a woven. I've seen it made in linen as well. Um, oh yes, that's right. So if you buy if you buy your patterns, your PDF patterns through the fold line, they'll print them for you. And I think Dragonfly Fabrics and Fab I know Dragonfly Fabrics do it. Uh, if you buy your PDF patterns from them, Clark, then they'll you can get you can opt to get them printed by them as well. So you can buy the PDF and they will print it for you. So that's quite good. Oh, yes, Clark, we have had to postpone our New York trip, very sadly. Um, uh, Cunard have uh, cancelled sailings till the end of July, so we've had to postpone, and we are actually going to do it next August. So if you want to join us, that would be lovely. Come and join us next year. Because um, it was, yeah, there's a couple of spaces. And it would be lovely to see you in mid Patricia. Patricia. Uh, Oh, Amy, did you encourage them to buy this fabric? Lies! <laughs> Before 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> when you're a stall Vicious holder... Vicious lies! <laughs> when you're a stall holder, you, you get to have a little preview of the fabrics and uh, buy things early. It's the only time you actually get to go and buy fabric. Actually, I think we had quite a lot of fun that morning, uh, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yay, Clark's going to join us. Just message Amy and she can sort it out for you. <laughs> Yes, Sally, I know you like Pattensy, don't you? I, I, I like the paper that Pattensy do. Um, do you know, I typed in Pattensy. I thought, I was, I thought I'd organised to get my patterns through Pattensy. Uh, and I just typed in Pattensy into the Google search, but Netprinter come up. So. Yes, August 2021, Jilly. 
We're going to go to New York and come back on the Queen Mary. Very exciting. Oh, now, is this the, which pattern did you choose in the end, Suzanne, for your wrap dress? Because I know we looked, oh, that's it, Vogue, 1896, I just saw that, sorry. Just read the comments. Something I can't in front of it, I can see. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice to see, because we've done lots of the Makers Atelier wrap dress, haven't we, in the stretch fabric. And I've got a quite a nice, I think that might be the one that I've made, actually, the woven one. Um, I've got a couple of woven ones that I've made with Vogue patterns. So it'd be nice to um, to see that one made as well. What else are I going to talk about? That was my things about the sales. Oh, okay. So it should Clark's be... Clark's packing already. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We were saying, actually, because of lockdown, we haven't got as much cruise wear as we should have had. If we were going this year, we weren't actually ready for it. So we've got another whole year now to make cruise wear, Clark. So... <laughs> get the sequins out. Yeah, get your sequins out. Um, it's very exciting. I know, it's terrible, isn't it? We were already bursting with excitement to go this year. We've got a whole year to be excited now. It's just cruel. <laughs> Oh, did Avid Sims just do it as well? That's interesting. And they use thicker paper, so they're more like net printer. Oh, Sue, Sue's off for a walk now. Hi, Sue. Have a nice walk. I've got love to Florence. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing I wanted to know is who's, who's celebrating Eurovision this week? I feel like we should have bunting up again this week for Eurovision. Um, oh, Kate, yes, there are a couple of spaces um, for next year's crew, so just email Amy. Uh, and she can let you know. I think there's three, two or three spaces. Um, I'll just put my email in the comments. Yeah, Amy will just put her, her, her email there. And you can just email her and she will uh, let you know um, because everyone obviously has an individual quote because it's everyone has slightly different things they want to do. We stay um, four nights in New York. Uh, I've organised for to have tours of various different things and a talk with the lovely Kenneth D. King. If you know Kenneth King, he's a couturier from New York. He's well worth following at the moment. He lives in New York. Um, uh, there we go. Kate's putting her. <laughs> What's your email address? Um, uh, yeah, Kenneth King, is. he lives in New York at the moment. He's putting up loads of pictures of empty streets in New York. It's so weird to see it. Ah, oh, Clark, I knew you'd be Eurovision ready, Clark. <laughs> Dressing up. We had bunting last week for VE Day, and I do feel we should have bunting this week for Eurovision. Very exciting. I love Eurovision. Yeah, you could wear your jumpsuit that you made at the retreat last year. <laughs> I think we're still going to watch it. <laughs> flags and glitter. Yeah, we should have had glittery flags this year rather than uh, VE Day bunting. <laughs> Yes, I want to see pictures of your uh, Eurovision celebrations. We love a bit of you. Any excuse to dress up, really, isn't it? Any excuse, especially at the moment when we, you know, be living in our pyjamas. Any excuse to dress up. Anyway, we'll keep chatting, but I'm... I'm look, I've been chatting for ages. Uh, I'm, <laughs> uh, well, there we go. We've had a message about... <laughs> Someone's interested in this cruise for next year, Ings. <laughs> so we'll, um, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll let you know. Uh, no COVID case for two weeks. That's really great, Suzanne. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, that's really good. Good news. Very good news. Very reassuring. Yeah, it is. It's because you, because especially as um, as they've lifted the lockdown a little bit in Guernsey as well, and it's that's really good news. Oh. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? I know all the, all the uh, Claire's saying about it would have been her daughter's um, year 13 Leavers Day ball yesterday. So, and it's really sad, isn't it? Everyone's missing out on their parties. I know a couple of people have missed out on graduation balls and all sorts of things. But it's good to dress up anyway. I'm sure all these parties are going to happen. Um, they're going to happen later on. So we'll uh, be lots. There'll be so many parties, won't there? When we can actually have, I can't imagine at the moment having a party, but um, there will be lots of parties when we can. So I'm going to carry on chatting to you because it's lovely. It's lovely hearing what you've all been up to and seeing you all chatting in the in the comments here. But I wanted to do a demo because that's what I like to do. I like to do something more than just chat on a Saturday. And I thought I'd do a demo this week. This um, top that I'm wearing and, and lots of kimonos and this sort of star jacket. I always use French seams when I'm doing this sort of thing because often you'll wear it open and you can see the inside of the seams. Uh, so it's nice to have a really nice seam finish. And I use French seams uh, in a lot of these sort of garments. And when I'm doing a French seam, I use a quarter inch foot. Um, I don't know if you, 
use a quarter inch but if you're quilting you would use a quarter, your quarter inch foot but this quarter inch that um oh clark i know miss miss you coming to the midhurst as well we'll be back together soon uh, Amy, amy's bringing, gonna move the camera amy's just bring, coming in for a close-up <laughs> oh no you've moved my notes out of the way oh that's why i don't know <laughs> it's fine <laughs> Oh yes, Claire, you had a graduation as well, so you're missing out on it. I'm sure they'll I'm sure they'll redo it though. I'm sure they'll redo it. So this is a quarter inch foot. This way? This mm, way? That way. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, there. There? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're allowed to tell me which way to move Sorry. Well, we, <laughs> Forget we do that. this for the workshops. Amy's giving me lots of hand signals, I end up doing this by getting the shot. Anyway, <laughs> there we go. That's a quarter inch foot. So it's got a little guide at the side here and the hole in the middle. So when you line up this guide, the edge of your fabric, you're doing a quarter inch or six millimeter seam. Now this foot is really useful because it's got a second hole there on the other on the side on this side. And when you move your needle all the way over to the left. Um, it'll go through this hole and then you're doing a one centimetre seam. So that's a really useful tip about this foot. It will do a quarter inch or six millimetre seam, but it would also do a um, three eighths or one centimetre seam as well. I did not know that. Oh. There you go. Yeah, Can't believe that's I very told handy. You that. It's a very handy tip. I'm so, learning so much in when, <laughs> when you're doing a um, uh, a French seam. You normally start off with a one centimetre seam. So if you're, if you're, this is if your if your seam allowance is a, a five eighths or one and a half centimetres. You start off with the biggest part. So you start off with a one centimetre seam. Uh, so I'm going to put this machine, this foot on the machine here, and just going to move that out of the way. And there we go. I'm going to do, I'll move my needle over to the left. So I'll just show the, I've just got to go over here because I've got to go all the way over to the left, which is zero. So now, now the needle is going through the hole on the left-hand side. So when I stitch, I'm lining up the edge of the foot to the edge of the fabric and stitching a one centimetre seam. stitched that so you can see that nice one centimeter seam jen didn't know that either oh, yeah there you go. this has now changed my french seam life ah now i'm going to trim this down to about three millimeters now i would also be pressing this at every stage if i was doing this on a garment so this is a sample and i know i should really be pressing on my samples as well the iron's all the way over there. So once you've trimmed, press that to one side. So I'm just going to finger press this, but I would do this on an iron if I was doing this on a garment. And then press it right sides together. So you started off wrong sides together. I said that. Started off wrong sides together. And then trim it and turn it right sides together. And now I can move my needle back to the middle, which on this machine is 3.5. And now I'm going to line up again to the edge of the foot. So line up the fabric to the edge of the foot. And now I'm doing a quarter inch seam. go and all the seam all the edges all the rough raw edges are inside oh i trimmed it down to three millimeters suzanne so i did a one centimeter seam first of all trim down to three millimeters and press it right sides together and then you stitch your um quarter inch or half centimeter seam Oh, Jilly, I know. I do tack quite a lot of things. Jilly's saying that her 90-year-old mum is horrified that we don't tack. Um, I do tack quite a lot, particularly in my couture. I'm tacking all the time. Um, it depends on the fabric. And as you know, I always pin and tack an um, invisible zip as well. 
So yes, I hope that was helpful. Just a really quick way of doing a French seam, just using your quarter inch foot. It just makes it really accurate and really quick, especially if you've got lots to do. I made a dress recently for a friend which had eight panels in it. So it was more than that actually. And it was all French seams because it was in silk. So that's a really good one, Suzanne, for when you're working with silk as well, that quarter inch foot. That's changed my life. <laughs> I can't believe you have never told me that before. I can't believe I have told you that before. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't ask what the other hole was for, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, so obviously a lot of independent it's patterns. Like an air hole. <laughs> <laughs> this foot's really useful because a lot of independent patterns have different seam allowances. Um, uh, I've always wanted, you don't do a narrow seam to begin with instead of a one seam. No, because I, no, because I like my finished um, the reason I don't, I do, a lot of pattern companies do it the other way around. They do the half centimetre, then they don't trim, and they just do the one centimetre. I like my French seams to be small. I always think a French seam is going to be on a fine fabric, uh, generally. So you want it to be nice and uh, neat and small. So I always do the one centimetre first and then the half centimetre set afterwards. So you get a nice small French seam. Uh, most brands do do a quarter inch foot. Yes, they do, Susan. This is just, this is the um, Janome one. Um, <laughs> Wendy's saying I've always got a little secret that she doesn't know either so you think you've been coming to me for years and I've shown you everything and there's always something <laughs> I have to keep I have to keep you know being able to teach you all <laughs> but either do do a quarter inch foot Suzanne but I don't know if they have a second hole in it uh, that's the only thing for the Beninas but they might well do knowing Benina they probably do have a oh there you go see Sally saying yes there is do they have a second hole in there one Sally or do they probably do a one centimetre foot? Now, there isn't a letter on this one, Janet, unfortunately. There's no, it's just, it hasn't got a letter on it. It's a um, standard it's a, with yeah, all machines, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, a lot of the machines come with it. So Catherine, who bought her machine last week, you should have that one. 37, is that the Benina? I if think. you hold it straight up so they can see the little guide. That way. And put your hand behind it. Yeah, can you see that? That's the little guide on the side there. The Benina one doesn't have a second hole. Oh, it's just the Janome. So sorry, Benina people. Normally Benina have an advantage on us, don't they? But this time, Janome have one. <laughs> <laughs> but I expect Janome actually do a one centimetre, uh, one centimetre foot and a, uh, like a three eighths foot and a quarter inch foot. So that was my um, little tip on French seams and using that one. There you go, I think it's 37 on the Benina, the quarter inch foot. But it doesn't have a second hole for the one centimetre. So I love French seams, I do them on silk. I'm, when I'm making shirts, I always do a French seam, um, little silk camisoles, pyjamas. Yeah, it looks like an O, doesn't it? It does look like an it's got a little dot there. I didn't know if it was an O. Oh, it could be. Let me see. It's got like a dot. Yeah. Oh no, that is an O. It's an O, yeah. there you go, it is an O. <laughs> With my stronger glasses. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. It's an O. <laughs> there you go. On the Janomis. Right. So that was my little demo on um, French seams. We've had a lot of chat on the uh, Midhurst Sewers this week about scuba. I know that um, I think Sally got a lot of scuba from Colville this week. And I have got, I don't know if you can see this, I'll have to show this when the camera's up actually. Um, this is my scuba. I'll have to show this. Wait, if you can hold it up, I can hold it up. This is my scuba that I got. I'll have to stand up. Have to stand up. There we go. That's my piece of scuba that I bought, that I rediscovered last year when I was tidying up. Uh, it's got black on the bottom, but isn't it gorgeous? So I'm not, I really think I'm going to make a, I don't know, a dress or a skirt out of it. Um, but we've been chatting about scuba a little bit, and I wanted to give you a couple of tips about working with scuba today. Um, it's a great fabric. You can use it like a sort of bodycon uh, type fabric. So you can make like a, uh, we've made it before, a dress for you, Amy, didn't we? We made a, made a lining we out of the, the scuba. lining in scuba, yes. Yeah. Like an internal shapewear. Mm. Oh, there you go. So I'm still looking about the feet. Um, Sally's saying that the Benina 57, number 57 foot, does a one eighth seam. That would be, that's three millimetres, so that'd be good really for the good. rugby shirt. That'd be good for the rugby shirt, yes. <laughs> there you go. That'll do a three eighths, a three millimetre on eighth of an inch seam. There you go. 
57 or is it 57 or 37 I think quarter inch 57 does a, an eighth of an inch seam so always think I mean we often just I mean I, again I do a class all about machine feet because we often do get our um, sewing machines out and just use the same foot all the time um, but there are so many different things you can do so many different feet that you can use and this and this is along with the ditch foot and the walking foot uh, are my favorites so going back to scuba this is a sample of scuba here. So scuba is quite stretchy. It's not stretchy like jersey, uh, like some of the knit, knit fabrics, but it's got quite a bit of stretch. So I always think ideally put a walking foot on when you're um, working with scuba. This is a walking foot. When you're working with stretch or scuba or boiled wool, then a walking foot is really useful. And I know they do those for all machines. That's the um, Janome one. And a walking foot has little teeth underneath that pull the fabric through from the top at the same speed as the feed dogs in the machine are pulling through from underneath. So if you've got a stretchy fabric, you won't find that one is being pulled through quicker than the other if you use a walking foot. So I would suggest a walking foot when you're working with scuba. Uh, I'd also suggest using, well, you can try a microtex needle, but you might want to use a stretch needle uh, when you're working with scuba, just because of the stretch, just to avoid getting skip stitches. One of the good things about scuba is it doesn't fray. So you can choose a project that has got um, a raw edge if you want to. You could make the raw edge coat out of scuba. That looks really nice. The, the Meg's Atelier raw edge coat looks really good. And also the sort of pull on skirts look great uh, in scuba. You can do things that are a little bit more architectural as well. You can do things that hold their shape like skater skirts with a nice wavy skirt. It doesn't press very well. So what I was going to do, I'm just going to quickly stitch a seam on this, actually. Um, I've only got a small sample here, so I'm not going to put the walking foot on, just for this little snippet. But when you're doing your garments, you will put a walking foot on, otherwise you'll find that it will just slip. Um, And you'll see that this doesn't it doesn't press very well you can you can do it with a clapper and all sorts of things and it doesn't press so I would suggest doing a top stitch down each side or a zigzag stitch over the top what I quite like to do is choose the triple zigzag stitch which is uh, number eight on these machines here which is the one that does three stitches up, up and three stitches down mm -hmm. um, so that's quite a good decorative stitch and I'm just going to select that. I didn't check the number then. That's number eight, isn't it? I'm going to do it here on this one. I'm going to do it. Okay. Just going to make the stitch a bit bigger. So when you're doing it, obviously, again, you'd have your walking foot on. Do it from the right side. Centre your foot down the middle. And then zigzag. I'm probably not going to go straight because I'm looking at a funny angle. There we go, zigzag over your seam. And you can use a contrast thread or a matching thread. I made a nice bomber jacket uh, out of scuba and it worked really well with this nice zigzag over the top. And then you take your um, scissors and trim off the excess on the back. You see, I've got a bit wonky because I was trying to sew around the camera. Tough. Yes. <laughs> but this is... Um, a really good way of just controlling your seam allowances and then trimming them off they don't fray so you haven't got to worry about the the fraying of it and doing a top stitch any of the decorative stitches would look really nice over the top actually or we'll just hold those um, seam allowances in place and yeah there's a bomber jacket's really nice I think Sally was looking yeah Sally's got lots of scuba to try haven't you Sally so have a go with that the bomber jacket looks great with those seams as well. Talking about sportswear. So those are my demos today. I hope that's been helpful um, today. Unusual scissors. Oh yeah, these are the applique scissors, um, Susan. These are really good when you're trimming close to something like I was there. Oh, I, whoo, no, it's okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> I accidentally hit end live then for a no, minute. That are we was... still there? Yeah. <laughs> Can you just let us know you're still there? Can you I, still see us? I think I saved it. But... <laughs> oh, my heart.
heart. Are we still alive? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah so when you're using these scissors, Susan, sorry, <laughs> you can put the wide bit of the scissors underneath uh, and then it just you can trim really close without risking trimming you underneath. Um, the train. Oh, the asymmetric. Oh yes, now I've got that pattern, Emma. That's a good idea. Might have too many seams in it. Well, oh, but that would look lovely in the scuba. Thank you, Claire. <laughs> We're still alive. <laughs> um, good. Thank you, Julia. We're still alive. Oh, hi, Libby. Nice to see you. Libby came on our couture thing. Look at my couture jacket, Libby. It's getting there. How was your dress going that you started last? Was it a dress or a coat? I can't remember what it was you were doing now. Something very complicated anyway. Thank you, Marilyn. <laughs> yeah, so with these scissors, you just you can put the blade, the large part of the blade underneath, and then you don't risk um, trimming underneath. And you can use normal scissors, but I find applique scissors really good for that. So I'm going to move all of my stuff out of the way now. Because Amy's got a demonstration for you today, haven't you, Ames? Uh -huh. I do. Now, Amy oh. has. Yeah, what? carry on, carry on. <laughs> Amy's had no time to do any sewing this week, uh, so she thought, I haven't got any sewing to show you. Uh, so um, she's going to show you something else. I'm going to move my bits out of the way. This is um, Amy from a previous life. My previous life. Hi, everyone. <sighs> Hello. <laughs> I missed my no. mouse, didn't I? So, oops. We've decided that um, we should have cocktails mm -hmm. each week. Um, and mm -hmm. some of you may know that in a previous life, I used to be a bar manager and a nightclub manager and a... Yeah, you can see Oh, it. that's good. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> uh, and was trained in mixology. So I thought, what are they called? Uh, the scissors are called applique scissors, mm. Margaret. Hi, Margaret. Hey. So I thought um, it would be around this time of year that you would enjoy a nice cocktail in the sun before dinner or in a bar or restaurant, which we can't do. Hi, Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I would show you a cocktail every week. Yeah, because you are a trained mixologist, yes. aren't you? Yes. Yeah. So this week... We're going to be making cosmopolitans, which are quite an easy one, and most of us would have the ingredients in the uh, drinks cabinet. <laughs> Some of us. <laughs> this is Victor one of Victoria's favourite. This drinks. is Victoria's favourite, yeah, and one of ours. Um, so, what you need for a cosmopolitan is vodka. Generally, um, citron vodka is best, but we don't have that, so. Again, working with what we have. I also didn't have a martini glass, so I'm going to be using champagne flutes. Um, Cointreau. Clark's loving this idea. Good. Thanks, Clark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cranberry juice, limes, and an orange. That's what you need. And ice. Mm -hmm. So step one, if you don't have a shaker, um, I have a few shakers. Um, if you don't have a shaker, you could do it in a drinks bottle or Tupperware, anything that you can seal shut and give it a shake. But I have a cocktail shaker. So I'm going to be making two. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> um, but generally about four cubes of ice. they all stuck in my bowl. Uh, per person. And most shakers will allow you to make two at once. So ice in. Uh, the ratio of vodka to Cointreau is, well, most uh, bars, pretty much all bars across the country, have a rule that you can only have 50 mils of alcohol in a cocktail. So they're always going to be a little bit weaker than it's standard. So when at home, <laughs> I don't do that. And I do it correctly. So <laughs> um, it's a per person... 50 mils, or it's 45 mils, but I do 50, of vodka. So two single shots of vodka. And I'm making two, so I'm going to do two. That's, the, that's the ice popping. So. The name for mixologists we talked about. Do you remember what was that? Mm. There was another name was that we name? And There was one at the bar. We do a cocktail masterclass at one of Amy's bars, and uh, and the guy came up with this other name for a... Yeah. It was like a lizard or a dragon or something. I can't remember. Yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, remember that. I will remember. Yeah. Um, and then Cointreau, which uh, can be substituted for triple sec or Grand Marnier. 
generally every liqueur has a good, a better and a best. So good is triple sec, better is Cointreau, best is Grand Marnier. If you don't have Cointreau, it's orange flavoured, so you could just put a little bit of extra vodka. It's one shot of Cointreau, so your two shots of vodka. Um, you could just use some orange essence with some extra vodka. Emma likes this. Good. She is dressing up and having a cocktail. Yay! She's on the dressing well, up. We also thought cocktails. that by the time I come in, it's nearly one o'clock, which is acceptable for cocktails. <laughs> um, then uh, cranberry juice. Um, you need the same amount of Cointreau, so it's one shot of cranberry juice per person. No. And then limes. Now I did cut some last night, um, but you're going to be squeezing the limes and then also shaking with the limes. So to get the most out of your lime, cut it in half and just cut through the pith here. Just do a little incision just on the board before you cut your wedges. Then you're going to slice some wedges. So it's um, two wedges per person generally is the rule. I'm going to cut fresh ones because I think those are a bit dry. And the reason for cutting through that pith is when you squeeze it, in, you squeeze it in first and then drop it in. That's really good. But I it means you're getting loads that. of juice out of the lime first. So you don't need to go and juice your limes. That's just an unnecessary bit of washing up. You can just squeeze it in and then drop it in because you want the zest as well. You want the flavour from that. I forgot to bring a oh, wipe on that. <laughs> So that's all you need to go into the shaker. If you have a shaker, make sure you give it a tap to put a seal on there. And then you're gonna shake it. And you're gonna keep shaking until it's so cold you can't touch it. That's the idea. That's getting pretty cold now. The idea is the more the more ice, the better, because the ice will help not only to chill the drink, but it's a term we use in the industry called bruising the vodka. Um, and it will bring out loads of flavour from the vodka, so you don't get that sort of really horrible vodka-y taste that you would remember from shots and things like that. It makes it really lovely. Janet's saying that she could dump it this last night. She was in a virtual hair and house pub quiz. Oh. And they had to show a cocktail they'd made, um, they'd made in their tea. Oh. Oh, and Sally's I asking, can you put up. the recipe on, on Facebook? I will, yeah. absolutely, yeah. But she hasn't got a pen and paper. So, we're then going to... You might have guessed we were testing this last night. We did it's, test it. It's really good. Yeah. This is it's one of my favourites, I think, actually, across the policy. Yeah. Favorite. I mean, sometimes you go to a cocktail bar and they're really sweet, and that's because they don't put as much alcohol in and they, put, they top it up with cranberry juice. So, it can be too sweet. You just need... Mm. What, 25 mils. If you don't have the little measures, um, like I have, you can use um, a tablespoon. A tablespoon is 15 mils. So just use two for <laughs> one shot. Be a little bit more. But, you know, who's complaining? Then we want to garnish our cocktail. So you take an orange and with a peeler, you get a nice peel of rind here. Some of the ones in bars are really bright red and you'll, you'll see this is a lovely pale pink. I'm just going to move these oh, yeah, out of the way. Oh yeah, you can move those out of the way. You'll see this is a lovely pale pink and often a cosmopolitan in a bar is really bright because they use more cosmo they use more cranberry juice. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you would take <clears> your <throat> rind, you just need a little piece of rind, and you get a lighter. This and this is where you can show off. off. We did have to test this last night because we were worried the smoke alarm might go off. <laughs> so you would hold your rind by the drink here, get your lighter, and just squeeze it like that. And it just, all the little zesty, burnt zest goes into the drink. Like that. Then, to be really snazzy, you can get another piece of rind. And this is where being, you know, we thought we need to tie in a sewing technique <laughs> to every cocktail. So you take another piece of rind and some pinking shears Mm. which um, I had in one of the bars I managed. No, I had to buy, I had to get them for Mum got me some bars. pinking shears. And you would trim the sides of your orange peel, give it a twist over the drink so that more zest flies out. 
and then you have a lovely little curly pinking sheared orange in the top of your drink. Yay! And that's it. That's our little cosmopolitan. So you can try that now, Ma. Oh, wait, Ma. Oh, you can have that one. Thank you. <laughs> the pinking shears is a really good idea for any um, garnish for anything. It just makes it look really pretty. Ooh, you get a nice little zest that's all pretty and coutured. <laughs> Couture, Couture cocktails. cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Okay, cheers. cheers. <laughs> it's really nice. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's good. I keep saying cheers. <laughs> so there we go. Thank you, Ames. You're very welcome. We love a cocktail. Let's. What's your favourite cocktail? Do you like yeah. cocktails? This I'd is... love suggestions mm. for what you'd like to see because everybody has a bottle of something random in their <laughs> drinks cabinet and, uh, <laughs> and you don't know what to do with it so yeah let me know and I'll see if I can work out a cocktail if you don't drink um, and you want to join the party um, rather than just having a cranberry juice you could use um, a small amount of lemonade with your cranberry juice and some orange essence and you can get the same, same taste. colour and taste yeah. Well, we're getting suggestions now, whiskey sours, Mojito. mojitos, Harvey Warbangers. <laughs> yeah, a mojito is a really good one. I love making mojitos. Mm. That's another one that's really hit and miss in different Very bars, hit and it? miss, and yeah. I have a foolproof recipe for a mojito, so maybe we'll do mojitos next week. Yeah. Galliano. <laughs> so many people have a bottle of Galliano in their liqueur cabinet and don't know what to do. Oh, look at all these suggestions. Okay, good. <laughs> this might be a good feature yeah well the reason we came up with this was we watch Sunday brunch every mm. Sunday morning and it's really funny and they're always making cocktails and it gets quite silly so we thought well why not yeah I know how to do that that's yeah. something I can actually teach you're, you're, you guys you're really good at cocktails <laughs> and Amy's really invented a club where every week you used to have a cocktail challenge for your staff didn't you they used to have to invent yeah. cocktails and things so orange squash you can have an orange squash Jane but we can make some mocktails I could do a mocktail as well each week because yeah. <laughs> you can have something more exciting than a, mm. than a orange juice. Mm. No, I'm not going to be drinking all that because that's quite strong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, might drink I made one with Norwegian vodka last night and that was... Ooh. Oh, a pina colada now. A pina colada, thanks Erin. A pina colada mm -hmm. is one of my favourites as well. I remember being in... Um, uh, in Barcelona once and it had this massive pina colada. It was so long. I thought I had another one of those and then because it was so sickly I couldn't have it. Oh. Margaret said that was brilliant. Thank <laughs> Thanks, Margaret. I hope you enjoy. Yeah. Like to see your pictures of uh, cosmopolitans so now too. <laughs> Yeah, we think they go hand in hand. So yeah. cocktails. Really. I did a whole talk, didn't I, once about co cocktails and couture. Yeah. So I think it's nice. Well, we so. always go for cocktails, but on our retreats, or mm. we try and fit a bit of cocktail in. And so we've this. missed two retreats now. I know. Which means we've missed two cocktail opportunities. And we're going <laughs> to miss all those ones we would have had in, in, uh, New, in York. New York as well. So we'll just make up for it. Yeah. Just once a week, though. Yeah, once a week on a Saturday <laughs> afternoon. Yeah. We're supposed to be doing work in the afternoon. There are good and pina colada, good and bad pina colada, Sally. So Amy, yeah, will show you I've got now. a really nice pina colada recipe as well that uses mm. nice fresh ingredients. Yeah, um, a lot of bars and restaurants because the pina colada process is actually quite long. Mm. There's loads of ingredients that go into a proper pina colada, so a lot of them have premixes. Um, which, yeah. you know, are nice, but they often are full of additives and full of fake Very sugar sickly. and really sickly. Um, and I should, I think I need to make, need to, well, I'm going to have to make a vegan pina colada because we don't actually drink dairy. But yeah. um, you can use coconut milk. You right? can use coconut, yeah, mm. instead of cream. Mm. Or we can use oat cream. Erin, yeah. <laughs> our, our favourites are Cosmopolitan. That's the one we did this week because Cosmopolitan's our favourite cocktail. Yeah, I love a Cosmopolitan. Yeah. You like yeah. rum cocktails. I well, like rum. I like Brazilian rum, mm. cachaça. So I like a caipirinha. Mm. I can't really believe nice. Dan hasn't waved today. Because I know, Dan, Dan, Dan my friend, what? he normally waves <laughs> on a Saturday from Harrogate. He actually runs a, a mobile bar up in Harrogate. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm surprised he's not watching mm. today. So, but that's that's great. Thank you. I think that's a nice addition to our lives. Let us know if you like that. And then you'll do a cocktail recipe every week as well. So we'll yeah. do a demo, a cocktail demo and uh, a sewing demo every week. Just to keep us going. <laughs> <laughs> that's lovely. So, because you're, you're, you're not having time to do much sewing, like other sewing. No sewing, no. Mm. So, I know every week I say, oh, I'm going to make this this week, and it hasn't happened. This mm. week, um, yeah, like we said, I had over 100 orders in a day for mm. face masks. So, um, that's what I've been doing. Um, Thanks, Emma. Thanks, Emma. And she's got a cocktail. I'm loving the emoji work, everybody. Good emojis cocktail, today. Yeah, cocktail yeah. emojis. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, no, so I haven't made any clothes. And I actually said this morning, I've got nothing new to wear on these yeah. lives. So this is uh, my Nina Lee blazer. Mm. And I'm in my ginger jeans, jeans today, which I think I've already worn once, but whatever. <laughs> well, if you go so much longer, we'll have to stop. We can't keep wearing You have to recycle <laughs> clothes. Yeah, yeah. yeah I cool. know. I really want to do some sewing yeah. uh, for myself and not just making masks, mm. but we do what we've got to do. Yeah. Yours are in the post, Janet. Mm. I think they maybe went in yesterday. Yeah, but yeah, did. yours yeah. have been posted now. Mm. So thank you for your order. Mm. So, I think yeah. that's all we've got for you this week. Thank you so much for joining us again. It's been really great, hasn't it? It's been it lovely. has. So it's, it's been a really nice, week. really nice chat today as well. So it's always lovely to to hear for everybody, and it's been nice to see a few new people, Clark and Patricia, coming today. And it's lovely. Thank you so much. So keep sewing, and let us know what you're making, and post your pictures. We want some Eurovision pictures now. If you're on Instagram or anything, tag us in your Eurovision um, pictures so I can see what you're wearing, and have a great time tonight watching it. I know it's not the same, but you know, I think Graham Norton's still there. But you can so. make a Cosmo to make it yeah, better Yeah, you now. can make a Cosmo <laughs> <laughs> for your Eurovision party. Um, I think we need oh, lots of people going. Yeah. <laughs> it's lovely oh, to see you. Oh, thank you, you I have to get up. Yeah, you have to go now. <laughs> I remembered. <laughs> Yay, I didn't have to remind you. <laughs> thank you very much, everybody, and I hope to see you all again next week. Have a great week. Bye.